The Mars rovers have taught us many things about the Red Planet, including the dangers that lurk there. If humans are ever to land on Mars, we will have to deal with dust devils, Mars quakes, toxic soil, and many other alien hazards. In this video, we will explore these threats and see what we could do about them. In 2017, the Curiosity rover captured this series of images of a dust devil forming on Mars. As of 2020, dust devils have been captured over and over again and are considered very common on Mars. These towering columns of dust are caused by low-pressure pockets of air near the Martian surface. The dust on the surface of the Red Planet is whipped up into a swirling maelstrom, lifting it up into the atmosphere. Wind on Mars is never very strong, even in the midst of these swirling torrents of dust. Because of that, Passing dust devils have actually been found to clean off the solar panels of Martian rovers. The rovers tend to have boosts in power after dust devils pass by. If a human were on Mars experiencing a dust devil, they wouldn't be feeling much in the way of wind. That's because the atmospheric pressure on Mars is only 1% of the pressure that we experience at sea level here on Earth. The dust in the lower portion of the devil would still be dangerous, though. It would be moving at speed and could still find its way into the joints of your suit. Another potential issue with the human exploration of Mars is the toxic soil. If your lungs were exposed to the Martian dust, you would die in a matter of weeks. This is due to the high concentrations of perchlorate compounds found in the dust that contain chlorine. These were first detected by NASA's Phoenix lander, which registered the levels in the Martian soil at around 0.5%. That might not sound like much, but it's a level high enough to be toxic to humans. Studies on Earth also showed that these levels of chlorine perchlorates were also damaging to plant life, causing massive reductions in chlorophyll content in leaves, lower levels of oxidation in roots, and a general reduction of plant size both above and below the ground. We're not entirely sure how dangerous the toxic dust of Mars will be for visiting humans. It's a question that the Mars 2020 rover will be able to help answer. Planned to be launched in July of 2020, the rover will cache samples of the Martian dust that could be retrieved by later missions to then be transported back to Earth for examination. One of the biggest dangers when it comes to the colonization of Mars will inevitably be the levels of radiation on the planet's surface. Mars, unlike Earth, has no global magnetosphere. This, in combination with the thin atmosphere of the planet, allows large amounts of ionizing radiation to filter down to the surface. This radiation has been measured by the 2001 Mars Odyssey spacecraft. It was found that the radiation levels on Mars were two and a half times higher than those found on the International Space Station, which means a three-year exposure would exceed NASA's current safety limits. Any colonists would have to travel underground to lower their levels of exposure to radiation. If you found yourself exposed on the surface of Mars, then you would have to worry about the atmosphere and the temperature without your suit. Neither of those things are going to be healthy for the human body. The atmosphere of Mars is around 95% carbon dioxide, and there's no free oxygen. This gaseous mixture is not something a human can breathe, and so hypoxia would strike within minutes. Much like a desert on Earth, the temperature of Mars is variable. On a summer day at the equator, the temperature can reach a comfortable 21 degrees Celsius. But as soon as the sun dips below the horizon, the temperature plummets down to minus 62 degrees Celsius. If you're without your suit and only have a breathing pack, or your suit has lost power to its heating unit, then you're only going to have a few hours before you freeze to death. An often unthought of danger for travelers to the planet Mars is the psychological impact of such an undertaking. Communication delays from Mars to Earth would need the creation of new protocols that assess crew members' psychological well-being. So far, the only way NASA has thought of simulating a Martian laboratory is the high seas simulation. This places scientists in a simulation of a Martian laboratory, forcing them to do repetitive tasks that would be similar to what they would do on Mars for up to a year at a time. But even this won't be enough to truly understand how it will feel to travel to Mars. 
On April the 6, 2019, NASA's InSight lander confirmed the presence of Mars quakes. As you might expect, a Mars quake is pretty similar to an earthquake. It's a form of seismic activity that shakes the planet's surface. On Mars, the quakes are pretty weak when compared to those on Earth. If you wanted a comparable form of seismology, you'd have to go to our moon. The energy produced by moon quakes and Mars quakes are apparently similar. As of mid-December 2019, the InSight lander had detected 322 Mars quakes and was detecting an average of two quakes every day. Most of these are tiny tremors, but a couple of them have been big enough to be tracked back to their source. Two of the biggest have come from the Cerberus Fosse, an area of intense geological activity on Mars. Thanks to the Mars rovers, our knowledge of the red planet is increasing every day. If we are going to try and land humans on Mars, we should learn from the mistakes of those before us. During the Apollo missions to the moon, astronaut Charlie Duke decided to try and beat the high jump world record. It was a decision which almost proved fatal. Click here to find out why that was such a bad idea and why falling down on the moon or Mars is incredibly dangerous. Thanks for watching Elder Fox. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell to keep up to date with the latest discoveries.